All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you can hear me, all right, I want you to raise your hand. Okay, okay, good. Um, I see that most of you are able to hear me. So you can go ahead and lower your hand now. Thank you for taking the quiz. Um, there's going to be one or two more quizzes before the um, finals uh, week, more so as a preparation for you for the final exam. And I see that most of you have done um, really, very well in this quiz, okay? Um, when I look at the quiz statistics, um, I see that the average is around 90%. That's around uh, the number where I want it to be because quizzes are more, um, meant for practice than to really um, trouble you or bug you, okay? So that's the idea. Now, um, you're going to talk about a new topic today, at uh, memories, okay? Memories are also called array subsystems. So far, we have done combinational logic, Even in combinational logic, we looked at static. We also looked at dynamic. Okay, then we looked at sequential circuits, mostly latches and flip flops. Okay, and all the interesting concepts surrounding uh, the sequential logic. Now we are going to talk about array subsystems. The idea is in memory, okay, components that are used in memory, they have a very repetitive, a repetitive architecture, okay? Um, a very repetitive architecture, almost like if you build a, a good cell that can store a one or a zero, Okay, if you can build one good cell that um, holds a one or a zero, you can multiply that a billion times. Okay, you can repeat the exact same architecture over and over and over again. So you can put that together um, adjacent in a um, matrix format or an array format. You can repeat the exact same cell three by three times, four by four times, and create a large memory, okay? So the basic building block the basic building block repeats itself over and over again in the form of an array, okay? Um, to build a larger memory component. That's the reason why we like to call this memory, we like to call this array subsystems. There is an underlying array architecture, okay? So that's exactly what is shown here. One basic storage area, one storage unit is repeated over and over and over again in an array format. There are M number of rows, Okay, the number of rows is N and the number of columns is N. Okay, uh, now in order to address, let's say there are four rows, zero, one, two, three. In order to name each of these rows uniquely, you need two bits. If there are M rows, in order to name all of those rows in, um, uniquely, you need log m to the base two, that many number of address signals, 
Okay, so when we talk about address signals, that's the number of unique, that's, that, that's the number of bits required. I need two bits here to uniquely identify each of these rows. Okay, so that's the relationship between the number of address signals K and the number of rows M. Okay, and the number of um, rows M. Now, memories are arranged in the array format, 4096 rows by eight columns. Okay, so this guy, the rows, the number of rows is the um, number of words, okay? And then N is the bits per, per word. M is the number of words. And then N is the number of bits per word. So typically, um, if you take an ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller, therefore, each of this word size is 32 bits, okay? So you can create an array of 4096 rows by eight columns or eight words per, eight bits per word, okay? It needs um, 12 log 4096 to the base two is 12. So that is how many address signals are needed, okay? And then you need eight input and output data signals. So data, therefore, so if they're using um, eight, 4096 by eight, so data is sent over this, vertical lines, okay? The vertical lines represent uh, data, number of words, okay? So this is the basic underlying architecture. When you're accessing memory, there are a bunch of signals that you can um, play around with. First of all, to begin with, there are the address lines, A0 through AK minus one, okay? We know there are the number of address, the number of address bits is K, right? K is log M base two. So that is shown over here. The number of data lines, the data here is n bits wide, okay? So D0, Q0 through Qn minus one, that's the data stored in the memory, okay? So the different signals as you can see are um, the address signals that need to be sent, the data signal that is stored, okay? A read write signal and an enable signal. Okay, this is the idea of the basic idea that applies to all kinds of memories. They have an underlying array architecture. They are divided into number of rows and number of columns. Number of columns represents the bits per word. Number of rows represents the words. Okay, based on the number of words, you can get um, the number of address signals needed. Okay you can see the number of address signals needed. So that's the basic underlying architecture for arrays. Okay, so let's look at some basic memory categories. When you're look at, looking at some basic memory categories, um, the question that you ask is, can you erase and reprogram contents of the memory? So how writable is your memory? That's one question. Okay, and also there is a question of storage permanence. When power is turned off to the memory components, are they going to lose their contents or are the contents going to persist? Okay, so that's another criterion. Okay, when it comes to writability, on one extreme is a read-only memory, okay? Um, on one extreme is a read-only memory in which the programmer cannot, um, cannot dynamically reprogram the contents of memory, okay? Now, on the other hand, on the other extreme, there is a random access memory, which is more volatile, okay? Which can be erased and written to 
more conveniently. Okay, so that's the idea of uh, writability. When it comes to storage permanence, on one extreme is non-volatile memories that are hard um, coded, that are burnt into the chip. Once you program them for the lifetime of the product, they do not lose their contents. Okay, the memory cannot be erased. Okay, um, as long as the product is functioning, the, the contents of the memory are intact. Okay, volatile memories, on the other hand, they typically lose their contents when the power is turned off. Okay, we are going to look at two kinds of volatile memories. Okay, RAM memories, SRAM cell and a DRAM cell, okay? And I will talk about the concepts of static versus dynamic in the context of memories. If we go back to our combinational logic, okay, the combinational logic itself had two categories. There was a static style and there was a dynamic style, okay? Even in sequential logic, I was able to do static latches and dynamic latches, right? Staticized latches and dynamic latches. Okay, we will come back to revisit these concepts again in the context of memory. Static memory, static RAM memory versus dynamic RAM memory. We'll come back to visit this. For now, we are looking at the basic concepts of memories, okay? And in order to give you a preview, so this is what we have done so far, okay? We looked at combinational logic, and we looked at uh, sequential logic. So we are looking at the different components of digital systems. There is combinational logic, there is sequential logic, there is array subsystems. In the coming classes, we will look at arithmetic circuits. Adders, subtractors, multipliers, division circuits, comparators, so on and so forth. And then there are, of course, special purpose circuits, okay? So the idea is we started with the simplest combinational logic circuits, and we are um, trying to cover as much ground as we can in terms of the breadth of digital circuits that we look at. We looked at combinational sequential memories, and then we will go on to talking about arithmetic circuits, okay? So let's get back to memories. Okay, so here is a memory classification tree. The way I read this is the entire um, available memory space is divided into memories that can be reprogrammed or read write memory and memories that cannot be reprogrammed or read only memory. Okay, and this is a writable memory. Okay, on the very extreme, on the right extreme, is mask programmed ROM, which is non volatile, which is programmed in a fabrication facility, in a clean room. Okay, once they come out of that clean room, all fabricated and designed. Okay, it is impossible to alter the contents of that memory. Okay, so some um, reboot instructions, some fundamental code, um, startup code, all of that can be programmed um, into a mask programmed ROM. Okay, this is non volatile, this cannot be changed by the designer. Okay, so that's uh, about all of this guy mask programmed ROM. On the left is uh, writable memories. On the left is memories that can be reprogrammed, okay? Even within those memories that can be reprogrammed, 
we have a volatile memory and non-volatile memory okay volatile memory um, they lose their contents they lose the contents when the power is turned off and non-volatile memory they don't lose their contents when the power is turned off okay so that's the idea of non-volatile memories even in volatile memories there is static ram and dynamic ram okay um, these are random access and in sequential access we have first in first out last in first out shift register and content addressable memories okay it is enough for us to know that there are um, different branches of memories okay even within um, writable reprogrammable memory we have non-volatile memory and volatile memory okay so when it comes to understanding memories the big design metrics are memory density how many bits can i store how much memory how many bits of memory can i store in a square millimeter of um, wafer of die size okay the other is access time how fast is memory how fast is it to read from and write to a particular memory and the third of course is power consumption okay the third is power consumption so for now um, understand that there are different kinds of uh, uh, classifications of memories and we will come back to talk about sram and dram memories questions please questions so far okay so now what you want to do is uh, i'm going to pass through this um, because this is just a uh, this is in ppt format that, that did not show up here but this is just a um, redundant um, representation of what we saw here okay classification of memories so when you organize memories along two axes okay x-axis representing um, the writability how easy it is to write to a particular memory that is um, that consideration is shown on the x-axis and on the y-axis you have um, storage permanence how permanent is the memory okay so in order to get for a lay of the land in order to understand get a sense for what a good memory is okay an ideal memory an ideal memory is something that has a uh, x that scores high on writability it's easy as a matter of fact it's extremely easy to um, write to write to or read from okay so it's um, extremely easy to write to and read from also in terms of the storage permanence an ideal memory um, holds its uh, contents forever or for lifetime of the product so that's a sweet spot uh, a memory that is extremely easy to write without having to fabricate in a clean room without having to take it out of a um, system um, and placing it in separate special purpose programmers if you can simply program it using in system in system um, writing configurations that's the ideal memory okay so compared to that let's look at the different kinds of location of the different kinds of memories so first of all let's look at the um, mask programmed memory remember this is on the one right extreme of the memory classification tree this can only be programmed in uh, clean rooms so that's the reason why it's very very close to the y-axis meaning that it is extremely hard to fabricate very difficult to fabricate okay so this guy is a uh, hard to program but it is permanent it's permanent we, it, it storage permanence 
is um, extremely high. Okay, so on the other extreme, if you look at this guy, um, there is RAM kind of memories, RAM memories. These are very volatile, these are very easy to program. They are easy to program and write, but then they are very, very volatile. Okay, that's the reason why they score um, low in terms of the storage permanence, but they store score high in terms of the um, ease of writability. That's the idea of SRAM. Okay, so understand this, and then comes the idea of uh, one-time programmable ROM, which um, can be programmed by the designer one time only in um, a lab, okay? Once you burn the fuses in there, um, you cannot go back and reprogram it, okay? And then comes the um, electrically um, programmable read-only memory, um, and then erasable uh, electrically programmable read-only memory, and a more convenient option that is being used more frequently these days is this guy, a flash memory, okay? Those of you who are taking CPE, um, CPE 187, know that when you program the microcontroller board, that is going to go into the flash memory, okay? So flash memory, um, it is not volatile, so it is important to, it's non-volatile, And it is also reasonably easy to program. You don't have to take it out of the system um, to program it. So this is uh, this is kind of a sweet spot, but it still takes um, it's still slower to program compared to um, RAM memory. And then there is a um, whole spectrum of uh, whole spectrum of uh, um, memories that are spread out across this um, across this uh, topography okay so between sram and dram both of these are volatile okay between sram and dram sram is more is a, or it's better to say um, dram is more volatile okay dram is more volatile compared to compared to static RAM, SRAM, okay? And the reason for that, um, we will see in the, um, in the next few minutes, okay? But what you should understand is that static RAM, pretty similar to a static latch, has a feedback. Okay. Dynamic RAM, on the other hand, stores its contents on a capacitance. Okay, on a capacitance. So um, these are extremely fast. These are um, less volatile, and these are easy to maintain. But they occupy more area compared to a DRAM. These are um, slower. Okay, there is leakage, but um, what happens is um, they occupy much less area, so they're more dense. So we'll talk about those distinctions, but then um, from the exam point of view, it is important for you to um, get a sense of where each of these different kinds of memories lie in terms of the writability and storage permanence. Okay. And then um, all of this um, is nothing but um, verbal description of writability and the different metrics that I talked about. On the high end is RAM, which is extremely easy to write. Um, on the low end is mask program ROM, which is very hard to program. Okay, so that's the idea in terms of writability. In terms of storage permanence, on the high end is the mask programmable ROM, which holds its contents 
it's a memory which is supposed to hold its contents, right? So mask programmed ROM holds its contents for the lifetime of the product. And on the lower end is a um, RAM, DRAM, like I mentioned. DRAM is more volatile compared to an SRAM, okay? So on the low end, very low end is DRAM, which loses its contents even with its power on, okay? So that's the idea in terms of storage permanence, okay? Here is again um, a repetition of what I have shown earlier, um, that a memory is nothing but a multiplication, a, a repetitive um, multiplication in a very organized fashion, okay, of one underlying memory cell, which is repeated over and over and over again, okay? So these lines here, the vertical lines, are uh, bit lines. So if you want to store data, if you want to store, I don't know, one, zero, one, zero, you apply those, you apply those into the bit lines, okay? If you write one, zero, one, zero, apply one, zero, one, zero onto the bit lines, that is not enough you also have to specify the address. So let's pay attention. The top row is zero, zero. The one here is zero, one. This guy is one, zero and one, one. Questions? Okay, so shown in red is the address lines. Okay, shown in green here is the data. Let us say you want to store one, zero, one, zero into this row over here, okay, into that row. What you have to do is you would apply 1010 on the address lines, on, on the data lines, and 10 corresponding to that on the uh, address line, okay? So the intersection of this address, um, and uh, it, it's, it's not quite an intersection, but uh, by providing the address lines, what you can do is you can route this data into the um, memory, okay? By applying the corresponding address lines, okay? Signal on the address lines. So that way the data on here has been um, written and stored into the memory cell over there, okay? So questions, please. What questions do you have at this point? Okay, so I'm going to make a very um, interesting um, suggestion here. Pay attention to this, okay? So we are going to see how memory, this block of memory can be used to store, um, to store any logic components, okay? So pay attention to the fact that if I look at this column, okay, if I, uh, let's see if I can do it this way, okay? Okay, let's say I look at that column, okay? And I decide to write a zero, 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 one into this memory, okay, into the contents, into the memory cell, okay? Then um, this guy, okay, let's um, talk about this guy. I Let's say I want to write, uh, hold on one second, okay. Let's say I decide to write um, a value of zero, one, one, one into the memory contents here, okay? And then we all know that the address lines here, this guy represents zero, zero. This guy represents zero, one. This line, there are four rows, right? The third row is one, zero, 
and the fourth row is one one. Okay, the, um, can you think about what is special um, about each of these colors here? The pink or the purple um, column represents something. The green column represents something else. Okay, and then if you want to extend this, I'm also going to color code this column like so. Okay, and I will write, uh, let's see, the field color, I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to um, write value of one, 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 and zero into this. Uh, into this column here, okay? What observation can you make by looking at each of these columns? Are the columns logic gates, like, like the, an and or? Yes, the columns are logic gates. Can you elaborate on that? That's, a, um, that's an astute observation. Because the the pink one, um, the pink one is an and because the tr if you do the truth table of an and gate with the, yes. the address, then um, you'll get those values. If you do the truth table with or for the green one, you'll get the or values. Thank you. And, if you um, think of these, yes. And then the the blue is an and, I think. Exactly. Exactly. So the idea is, if you think of these address lines as two inputs of a gate, then the contents of the memory here, they represent AND gate, zero and zero is zero, zero and one is zero, so on, one and zero is zero, one and one is one. So the idea is, I really do not have any logic gates here. All I have is blank places of memory. By using this memory and writing the output of a truth table, storing that into the memory, and the inputs I'm applying as the address lines, what I have done is I have converted this memory into a lookup table. I have converted a blank memory to behave like a logic gate, okay? This guy, the green um, column here, represent the logic value for R gate. The one in blue represent the logic for NAND gate. And then the empty one, you have the freedom to configure it to be any combinational logic that has two inputs. Okay, so that's the idea of using memory arrays to implement any combinational logic. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the idea of uh, using memory arrays that can be used as a lookup tables. Okay, so what we want to understand is a particular um, memory array which consists of all the empty blocks, building blocks laid out. It needs a bunch of support system, a bunch of support signals. First of all, there is the address signals. We know that very well. And then there is the data signals themselves, sure enough. And then there are some control signals. There are some control signals. Okay, the first control signal, um, write enable, um, control signals, output enable, um, CS, and all of these, um, they represent, okay, chip select, write enable, and, uh, and output enable, okay? So if the same inputs are connected to more than one chip, you can select, select which chip you want to write to or read from using that chip select, okay? And using this write enable, um, if you assert that write enable signal, what happens is that uh, the data 
is written into the memory okay you can if you're not asserting that right enable signal data will be read from the memory okay so and then there is output enable so on and so forth so the idea is in addition to the regular memory uh, array that we see there's a bunch of support circuitry that inc includes support signals control signals address signals and data signals okay so that's the idea of uh, memory and memory uh, interfaces and you can configure the same size of memory in different formats the same 64 um, kilobytes of memory can be configured as 64 by 1 or 32k by 1 or 16k by 4 okay so you can arrange the exact same configuration in bunch of exact same memory size in bunch of different orientations okay um, aspect ratios okay so that's the idea of um, idea of different control signals okay now here is a quick comparison grid for memories okay the idea is that um, it, it's a different representation of what we already saw for example we look at um, static ram static ram it's very easy to reprogram it's very very fast okay the write speed is also extremely fast reading from it is also very very fast but the downside and the disadvantage is that it is volatile and uh, it is not as dense okay compare that to the dram which consumes a lot of power which is extremely volatile which is very very volatile and then it has its own advantages that it is um, easy to read easy to write so on and so forth okay so this is the exact same information that we already went over in that graph okay so this is information about uh, memory and different kinds of memory okay and then there is of course um read only memory and i welcome you to go through all of these um all of these uh, uh, categories okay i'm not going to spend a lot of time and as a matter of fact i did already show you how a particular data word is programmed into a particular address line okay let us say you wanted to um, write 1010 into that address line so all you have to do is to um, leave this fuse intact burn the fuse here leave this fuse intact and burn the fuse here okay so that way you're writing one zero one zero okay so if the technology that you are using to store data here is fuse technology if you're using um, an aluminum fuse to make or break connections in this case a connection that is intact is one and a connection that is broken is considered as zero in this case okay and then um, wherever you want to break the connections to program a zero you will blow up those fuses and if you want to leave the fuses intact um, that will be a one okay so that's the idea um, you can do that by applying carefully the address lines that correspond to this so the address lines would be um, if there are zero 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 one zero one zero if you write a value of zero one zero to the address lines and one zero one zero on the data lines okay then this particular um, row is going to be storing a value of one zero one zero okay that is read only memory because it is a fuse technology once you blow up the fuse you cannot reprogram it and that's the idea of read only memory you can only program it once but you cannot write it again so you can only read it okay so there is again mask programmed memories that are fabricated in clean rooms okay one time programmable rom which the designers can program once by blowing fuses okay if the fuses are blown once that amounts to 
fabric amounts to programming your memory but then that cannot be undone okay then there is um UV erasable programmable ROM, which can be reprogrammed by using special circuitry. Okay, so here is um, sample special circuitry that can be used to program and reprogram EEPROM components. Then there is electrically erasable programmable read only memory. It's a, it's a, um, an advanced evolved version of ROM, which can be reprogrammed over and over again. And then there is the flash memory, which is a, a, is a permanent memory, non-volatile memory, that can be reprogrammed uh, conveniently without any special circuitry um, of the system. Okay, you can leave them in place and then reprogram. Okay, then comes uh, random access memory, which are static RAM and dynamic RAM. So these are the different um, flavors of memories. And I want to stop here because when we come back in the next class, we will talk about the different variations of SRAM, uh, different variations of RAM, SRAM versus DRAM. Okay, but then um, what is important for you to realize, understand is that um, you can use blank memories Okay, you can use blank memories to create um, any combinational logic. Okay, we'll stop here. Questions, please.